Over a thousand years ago, a famous Chinese traveler, Hyun Siang, visited India and came to holy Banaras. Today it is Yu Chi who seeks the eternal verities in the land of enlightenment. <laughs> Saranath, six miles to the north of Banaras, is the celebrated city of the ancients, known as Mrigvan, or Deer Sanctuary. Saranath's museum is famous. The Lord Buddha preached his first sermon in the city to five disciples. One thing only do I teach thee, O monks, sorrow and its extinction. The pillar that rings to the memory of the Emperor Ashok, erected about 250 BC. Today its land capital with the wheel of Dharm forms the emblem of our nation. The way to enlightenment lay along the course of the sacred Ganga. Following in the master's footsteps, Yu Chi finds his way to Sonpur in Bihar, at the confluence of the Gandak and the Ganga. It is Kartik Purnima day and pilgrims congregate to bathe in the holy waters. The faithful use many modes of conveyance. The air is vibrant, festive, a sight oft repeated through the ages. The Sonpur festival, famed for its animal fair, one of the largest in the world. A unique feature is the sale of elephants. India may change, but her festivals continue unchanging. The hope of yesterday, of today and tomorrow. A time for singing from the heart. <laughs> Whither now, O pilgrim, to Patna, capital of Bihar, Patliputra of old, capital of the illustrious Chandragupta, and of Ashok, cradle of Indian history, haven of many religions. In this temple known as Harmandir, the great Sikh divine Guru Gobind Singh was born in the 18th century AD. The Patna Museum contains treasures that are a gamut of Indian art, a superb collection bronze, stone and terracotta, spanning more than 10,000 years of human endeavor. The high standard of design that prevailed through the years is revealed even in this mundane building, a granary of 1786 AD and a hundred feet high. Fifty-five miles from Patna, there flourished at Nalanda from the 2nd to the 10th century AD, a famous university, a center of learning for 10,000 ordained monks and other students. Hyun Siang, who studied here for five years, said, Nalanda's soaring domes touched the clouds, and the pinnacles of its temples seemed to be lost in the mists of the morning. Such was its glory. The enlightened one did exhort the middle course, the noble eightfold path, right views, right aspirations, right speech, right conduct, right livelihood, right exertions, right mindfulness, and right contemplation. Scores of foreign students came here to dispel their illusions, returning to their own homes with a lamp of learning kindled at Nalanda.
Even now Buddhists from other lands come here seeking solace through meditation to gaze at the past glory of Nalanda. They come also to pay homage to the memory of one who was born here, Sariputta, one of Lord Buddha's worthiest disciples. Lama Namgayal, a Tibetan resident of Nalanda, tells Yu Chi that in olden days, students of the university were maintained by more than 200 villagers. The rules of discipline were strict and were rigidly enforced. This clay chandelier, the terracotta seal of the university, and the plastic craft of those early artisans is a salient tribute to the vital role art played in the students' lives. If Athens be the school of Hellas, then ancient Bihar merits to be called the school of Asia. Yu Chi is advised to visit Lumbini in the Himalayan foothills where the Blessed One was born. In Nepal Terai, like a peak of the mighty Himalayas, rises the grand figure of the Lord Buddha from the mists of early history. The Lumbini pillar, erected about 244 BC, marks the site of the Buddha's birth. A second pillar stands at Laurya Nandanga in Bihar, built by the Emperor Ashok. Buddhists and Hindus alike pay homage here. Of polished stone, the pillar is inscribed with the edicts of Ashok. A third is at Rampurva, likewise engraved with edicts. And in the village of Laurya Araraj is another pillar inscribed with edicts, clear cut to this day. A fifth pillar stands at Vaishali in Muzaffarpur district. Vaishali is hallowed both in legend and history. It was the capital of the renowned Lichavi clan in the 6th century BC. The wheel of life molds the soul of man, a gleam of time between two eternities. In Vaishali was born Lord Mahavir, another great apostle, honored by all Jains. It was in Pavapuri, also in Bihar, that he died. But the memory of this apostle, of Ahimsa, is kept ever alive by the zeal of his followers. And now Yu Chi must go to Bodh Gaya, holiest of holy places, to devotees of the Enlightened One. The Chhat festival of Bihar is on and Gaya gleams with the fervor of the faithful. Thus the pilgrim comes along the enlightened path to Bodh Gaya. Here was kindled a flame that pierced the veils of darkness, a fair lotus unsullied by the mud in which it grows. <laughs> The pious are attracted here from every corner of the world. The temple has served as a model for others in India and abroad. Twenty-five centuries have come and gone since Shakyamuni, 
reached his final victory over worldly desires and realized the bliss of supreme knowledge. Under the Bodhi tree, he pondered on the ways of man. Then he arose, radiant and rejoicing, lifting high his voice with a supreme message for all the world. At Rajgir near Bodhgaya is Gridrakut, or the Vulture's Peak, a favorite abode of the Lord Buddha. Here the Master showed the path. Here is the Saptparni cave where was held the first Buddhist council six months after he died in 483 BC. Even as the ancient chariots have left their mark on solid rock, so, O pilgrim, will remembrance of the enlightened land be with thee all thy days. Tamo tam panamami buddham